Uh, and also Mazar Amir, who similarly is a cardiologist. He's working on the North Shore as well as for the Auckland Heart Group. And he's also developed an interest in heart failure. And as such, in amyloidosis, he's got a fellowship in um, with an interest in echocardiography as well as adult congenital heart disease. And he's also had a sabbatical working at the National Amyloidosis Centre in London. I think. Yeah, good morning. So uh, first, I'd like to thank NZAPA for the invitation, and uh, very glad to see that we have. Uh, interest in, and support to our patients. And oh, without any further ado, so I think my interest in amyloidosis started actually through my connection to hematology at the North Shore Hospital. I'm going to speak about the other amyloid, which is caused by plasma cell disease or something of blood cancer, in which the immunological cells start producing lots of protein that deposit in the heart. So about five years ago, my colleague uh, and hematologist, uh, Dave David Simpson, started sending me these patients, and it was such an experience. They're complex patients, they're sick, you don't have a big window of opportunity to, to treat. Um, they have multi-system disorder. If they have a, a myeloma type of cancer, some of them transform into more malignant forms, and the chemotherapy uh, is, is horrible. And, and I started to evolve that interest and, uh, and then um, gradually uh, started to see the other side of amyloidosis, which is becoming increasingly prevalent, which is the transthyretin amyloidosis, which is becoming the dominant figure in our, in our practice. But it's always the complex part of, in the diagnostic algorithm, how to exclude the AL amyloidosis. This is the bit that we have to take away before we come to a transthyretin amyloidosis diagnosis or, or other type of amyloidosis. Can you have the next slide, please? Oh, sorry. So, as you all know, amyloid is a deposition of extracellular progenaceous material. Uh, and it's, it, the word is from the word amylum, which is a starch-like material. This is a section in the heart, and it's stained to show what this thing looked like. Under, uh, under microscopy, using immunofluorescent technique, which is designed to color the protein itself, we see that sort of green color on it. Uh, and that is the diagnostic Congo red by referentials. So this is the diagnostic test for any amyloid. They all look the same under the microscope with this special stain. Um, the disease can deposit in any part of the body, as you know. The heart is an unprivileged organ in this area, unprivileged in a way, uh, but other organs, the, the nervous system, uh, the kidneys specifically, uh, and many other organs um, can, be, can be the culprits for this. So, the, the, just a sort of a, a summary, the types of amyloidoses are immunoglobulin, which is the light chain, which is the purpose of this uh, presentation. There's the wild type, in which you have a normal um, <coughs> protein called cystyretin, which is potentially amyloidogenic when it changes in its shape and turns into a, a protein that deposits in, in various body organs, predominantly the heart. There are the hereditary forms of amyloidosis, in which there is a mutant protein that will be pre predisposed to become amyloidogenic and deposit in various organs. And there is the vanishingly re re reduced, but still, uh, still present AA amyloidosis, which is caused by chronic inflammation. We used to see it more frequently in the days of rheumatoid diseases and chronic tuberculosis and things like that. We no longer see it, or we see it much rarely. Actually, I, I bumped into a patient a couple of weeks ago who has chronic skin disease, who had this condition. So the focus of today is, for my talk, is the AL amyloidosis, which is the immunological part of amyloidosis. And for us, this is a very uncomfortable area for cardiologists. 
this is really uncomfortable because this is the bit in which it is a cancerous process, it will require a different approach, it will require chemotherapy, and it has a small window of opportunity. So it is really a squeeze when we see these patients who have hearts that look abnormal and they could have the AL amyloidosis. It is really critical. I think it, will, it was made more complicated by uh, the fact that the age groups are the same, as you will see, uh, and the presence of another condition in which you have slightly increased immunoglobulins in the blood, but not cancer, called MDAS. I think Dr. Moore might talk about this later. So um, the fibrils which are forming the amyloid are made of fragments of monoclonal light chain. I'll, I'll come to this in a second. Uh, it can be it can be a, an isolation in 50% of cases. And other 50% of cases is in association with other plasma cell disease, and I'll explain what a plasma cell in a second, uh, and they're monoclonal light chains. So um, I, was, uh, I was telling uh, my colleagues, my wife is a hematologist, and she, she looked over my slides yesterday, and she nearly fell off her chair, she said, this is too simple. So, <laughs> so this is what an immunoglobulin is. It's made of two heavy chains, and these are, there are five of them, five types. And there is the light chain here. And this light chain is the one responsible for the, uh, the AL amyloidosis. So the, the, uh, the immune system is, um, just in a sort of a brief, once again, cardiologist viewpoint, uh, divided into two broad categories. There's the innate and the adaptive. Not to make it complicated, the innate are the cells that attack the invaders um, immediately without any any um, any targeting, and the adaptive system is made of cells that analyze and target the uh, the invader in a in a more appropriate way. And these are the lymphocytes. So the lymphocytes are T and B lymphocytes, and T lymphocytes turn into plasma cells, and the plasma cell produce these proteins. And these proteins, in excess, if they are cancerous cells and they have a single clone of cells, so they have one clone of cells, that they all look the same, and they produce the same amount of protein. They probably generate from a single cell with single mutation in the genes. And these produce the same protein, that protein deposited in the heart muscle and causes the amyloidosis. The tristar region is a very different path, and, and it's produced by the liver. And it's a normal protein. So, so this, is the, this is the pathway of the AL amyloidosis. I think the condition is really not common, uh, and what is about 1 to 100,000 cases of primary amyloidosis per year in New Zealand. Um, I quoted this from my colleague uh, Hugh Goodman from, um, um, from Hamilton. Uh, there are delays in diagnosis. Um, you need to see few doctors, and I think most of you who suffered this condition would have been through this path, through the transplant region type. Unfortunately, it does happen as well with the, uh, uh, with the AL amyloidosis. So this is an older study now from 2015, and the biggest offenders are usually the cardiologists. We don't pick it that quick. Um, it's a disease of older adults. Uh, the median age is about 64, uh, mainly males, and it occurs in all races in all geographic locations. And it can be isolated, or it can be a member of a, a bigger condition. So it can be part of what's called myeloma, in which you have the heavy changes <coughs> produced, and then it changes and become more and more of a light chain disease as well or it can be isolated. So for the purpose of today's, it's just what you just need to know that this is just part of, could be a part of a bigger group, or could be in isolation. I'll show you a case at the end of this that I'm, treated, I'm working with at the moment, of my patients. So the clinical presentation is very non-specific. Remember, this is a form of malignancy, cancer. So most of the symptoms are actually non-specific. Tired, fatigue, short, this shortness of breath. So shortness of breath is common. Renal involvement is common. 
especially when you're dealing with, uh, with the uh, myeloma type of light chain disease. Uh, cardiac involvement can be the only presentation in patients with primary amyloidosis in which you have only light chains without heavy chains. It's a very tricky disease to, uh, to treat and uh, to uh, diagnose. Not difficult to treat, they tell me. Um, you can have neuropathy, arthropathy, you can have skin disease, large tongue, large liver, bleeding disorders. Now, index of suspicion should be high in these contexts, but if you find a patient who developed heart failure with thick walls, basically, of the heart on echo, I think one should suspect that. And the set, this will we'll discuss this later, how the overlap between transthyretin and AL amyloidosis can play out in a situation like this. Hence, it's important <coughs> for us to remember that there are other features of the disease. So these are ugly photos um, of what you can see in patients with primary amyloidosis. A large tongue, where you can see how the teeth are attached to, uh, sort of cause an imprint on the side of the tongue. Purpura, where the skin diseases, and the, uh, the eye manifestations and the positions. Um, how do we suspect it? Well, in many cases, they come from the hematology uh, um, uh, doctors, and they tell us this is a myeloma that turned bad. Come and look at this for us. Uh, in the other 50% of cases, they can walk in your office like this. They have heart failure, thick hearts, abnormal ECGs, and abnormal biomarkers, so they have elevated proteins that come from the heart itself. And it's a primary heart condition. It is very, very, um, very much, very important to remember that this can present as easy as it does. Echocardiography, these are the images that I thought I'll sort of share with you here, is very helpful. Um, it's generally not specific, but with, once you put it in the context, it's incredibly useful as a first imaging step. And I think uh, Tim will go through the other side of it. Cardiac MRI is very important with very specific findings uh, of the position of the amyloid in the, um, uh, in the heart, in, in, the, uh, in this area, right under the surface of the heart. And this is the, um, the diagnostic criteria, <coughs> which, is, which is just a gl glance over, but it, it does require a biopsy. So this is a different disease from transthyretin, which you can diagnose without the need for biopsy. Um, so the, uh, the myeloma docs tell us all the time that you can't move this without showing that there is amyloidosis in a tissue. So the diagnosis depends on finding uh, the amyloid from tissue, fat aspirate, Congo red stain, and then we send it for a special test called mass spectrometry, <coughs> where we basically explode the protein and then we analyze the amino acids and match them to a database. And from there, we can find what type of amyloid we have. I'm sure whoever here in this room who had a biopsy would have had this, had this test. Um, hematologists love bone marrow examination, and I think it is a critical test in this case. It can show the amyloid will show these cells to be clonal. They're all the same. They are not sisters. They are actually fraternal twins. They are very, very close. They're very close. Now, this is a slide to show how this mass spectrometry works. So I don't want to bore you with this. Uh, the treatment, from our point of view, is really supportive um, for this condition. And the, and the outcome depend on how quick we get to the amyloid, or how far we can get rid of it. About a third get very good cure, about a third are left with some cardiac disease, and a third will be stuck with some, some, cardiac, uh, some long term important cardiac disability like heart failure or arrhythmia. So the sooner you get to it, the better. So you can see here that's the ATTR have a 5 to 10% chance of overlapping with this monoclonal, monoclonal tomopathy, which I believe will be covered by Dr. Molly later in, the, in, in this, this morning. So it is important to get this right. And I'm not going to 
<coughs> any further than that. So this is the patient I met with about six weeks ago, uh, who was referred for symptoms of shortness of breath at a slightly elevated NTV MP, 47 year old. And he'd been short of breath for about a year. I did his echo and it was just very concerning to see that the ventricle was very thick. This is quite a thick ventricle and very restricted in movement. And my immediate diagnosis was highly likely to be cardiac amyloidosis. I admitted him to hospital. He was seen by two physicians and two cardiologists and was discharged home without the basic tests for anal amyloidosis. Came back to my office about three weeks later for me to follow up on the, on, on the diagnosis. We have very high light chain and he undergoed a, a bone marrow biopsy that showed a clonal population of cells and he's going to go under, undergo chemotherapy, but he's going to get a cardiac biopsy before he gets his chemotherapy. So this is a relatively speedy diagnosis. This guy would have probably not had this uh, diagnosis that quick, but it was interesting to see the process that, uh, so uh, to see what, what happened to this, this patient. Sorry. Okay. So, um, so just a final slide on this condition called MGUS, monoclonal gammopathy of unknown uh, origin, and you see how high it is in the older population. Uh, this is American data. And uh, thank you very much.